So we're gonna do just a quick overview of some of our programs locally for recycling and within resource management. And then we'll also delve into different types of packing material and how you can handle those. And then similarly for holiday waste. So typical types of materials we see in December and January and, and how to best handle those. So first, what we'll start with is just looking at what we have going on in resource management. So within the city of Iowa City, uh, the division which I am a part of is called resource management. And it is what manages all the curbside collections all of the drop-off locations, the landfill, which also at the landfill has the compost facility and hazardous material collection facility. So I'm just gonna mention a little bit about each of these before we start talking pack and material. So in curbside collection, some of you may live in either a single family or up through a four unit apartment building in Iowa City. If you are in that category, then you likely receive curbside collection in Iowa City. So that is, um, roughly about 16,000 households, give or take, and that is weekly collection for organic material. So that includes yard waste and food waste, in addition to recycling and a, a whole variety of materials there, um, all mixed together in one bin. Um, we know, you know, obviously the materials like paper and cardboard, also waxy cartons, certain types of plastics, metal cans, etc. So we offer that service. And then of course, trash. So that's curbside collection. Our drop-off locations, and um, this is especially important to mention too, because we've had some changes in this just recently. So our three drop-off locations as of right now are Eastside Recycling Center, which is on Scott Boulevard, the Iowa City Landfill on the west end of town, and then this is the new one, South Riverside. So we just recently moved the North Dodge recycling bins. Um, that property is owned by Hy-Vee and they had some uh, future development possibilities for that. So we were asked to move and where we ended up was South Riverside. So we're down there now um, and that's going well. Um, same sort of accepted materials, just new location there. So at all three of these, we have the basic recycling, um, you know, the cardboard, paper, plastic, metal, glass. And then at especially Eastside and the landfill, we've got a lot of other types of recycling opportunities. So um, electronics recycling, appliances, motor oil, wine corks, light bulbs, lots of different types of programs. We'll talk about a few of those today, but then of course, if you have any specific questions about uh, you know, a television or a battery, et cetera, you can ask those at the end. I'm happy to chat about those. The Iowa City Landfill. So again, this is where the compost facility and the hazardous material facility are located. This serves all of Johnson County and Kelowna and Riverside. So a fairly decent service area there, uh, which also makes my job fairly interesting because while I am a City of Iowa City employee, being that our landfill serves all of Johnson County, uh, it's not unusual for me to be down in Kelowna um, or over in Oxford giving presentations or doing events in a normal year, of course, not 2020. Uh, as we know, things have changed quite a bit for event planning in 2020. But um, apart from that, yes, our whole service area is Johnson County. And then per year, and similarly, this has fluctuated. We've seen some reduction. This year, we've seen a slight increase in the amount of trash that we produce each year and what ends up getting landfilled at the Iowa City landfill, but approximately 135,000 tons of trash per year is what we landfill. Just a nice image of the compost facility here for you. And, and like I said previously, uh, all the material with curbside collections for organics ends up at this compost facility. Residents can also bring their own material directly to the facility. And then we do have some local haulers. So for example, Johnson County Refuse, they do pick up organic material, including food waste. Those types of vehicles are also allowed to come out and empty um, any organic material they have. And we process that into compost. From start to finish, that's about a year of a process. So when that material ends up on site, through the processing that we do, and then finally when it gets to that final product, that whole um, cycle takes about a year. So um, again, yard waste and food waste. And then finally, hazardous materials. So we do have that hazardous material program at the landfill. This is available to any resident of Johnson County, also small businesses in Johnson County. Um, for residents, it's no cost to participate. 
some exciting updates to this program, especially this year in 2020. We transitioned back in January from doing appointment only at the facility to having regular open hours. And this really was meant to increase accessibility of the program, make it easier for our residents to get there and properly dispose of hazardous materials. So now the regular hours, and this is for anyone, anyone can pull up to that overhang and we'll, we'll have a staff member in there full time during these open hours, which are Thursday, Friday and Saturday from 7 a.m. to 2 p.m. And then the other big change that we have as of this year is related to batteries. So I've got lots of interesting images here for you all on batteries. Some of them are pretty batteries, like what we see down here that look you know, nice and clean, like what you buy from the store. And then the rest of the photos of what I'm showing you here are damaged batteries. And the reason why I'm showing you guys these is because batteries are something that we are always very concerned about at the landfill. We always wanna make sure that they are properly disposed of. Uh, when batteries such as especially, you know, lithium or rechargeable batteries end up in the trash and then they show up in the landfill and equipment runs over them, uh, this is a serious issue because oftentimes a battery can become damaged and spark and start a fire. So that is what you're seeing here, some evidence after these batteries caught fire and our landfill operators had to put out the fire and remove the batteries from the landfill. Um, so this is, you know, actual real images from our landfill. These are not stock photos. Um, these were batteries that were pulled out. This one um, is a battery that, as you can see, it's sort of puffed up. It's damaged. This has not started a fire yet. This is a good example of something that we go through and properly package to make sure that it is not a danger. Um, so luckily, this was one that was caught before. These, as you can see, were caught after, though, um, very much after there was damage done in the landfill. So I'm bringing this up because we're trying to make our battery program more accessible. What that means is this year we started taking alkaline batteries. So alkaline batteries are, are a type of battery that typically are not accepted in battery recycling programs. But the interesting thing is it's the type of battery that people really use the most. Um, if you think about what goes in your remote control or all sorts of different devices we use. And so we decided that in order to reduce the amount of especially the dangerous batteries ending up in the landfill, to make it easier for our participants and for our customers, let's take all batteries. So that was our reasoning for doing that. And we accept any and all batteries out at the hazardous material facility. We're also working on increasing our drop-off locations in town to make it even more accessible. One of the drop-offs we have established and is open is the fire station on the west side of town. So it's on Emerald. And we do have a battery box in the entrance way. So between the two entrance doors, um, there is a box in there. So that's another drop-off we have. And I'm continuing to talk to local partners and retailers to get more and more opportunities there. So more good stuff to come there. Um, already a few drop-off locations. So again, if you have those batteries, please don't hesitate to bring them. You know, we're happy to properly dispose of those for you. Okay, so let's get on talking about packing material now. So the four main types I wanna to talk to you about today, and then we'll talk about some that are not as good for the environment or, or for the disposal end. So we'll talk about non-existent packaging, which you may be wondering what I'm meaning by that. Um, so non-existent, reusable, recyclable, and compostable. So first, let's talk about what I mean by non-existent. What I mean by this is, especially if we're talking about during the holiday time and we're maybe not able to see our family and friends, so maybe we're thinking ahead about sending packages, mailing gifts to them. Well, what I mean by this is instead of actually sending a physical gift via the mail or via a box or package, you can send gifts of meaning and experience. There's all sorts of ways to get really creative with this, where then you don't even necessarily need to deal with a material gift or actual material packing um, material. Instead, what you can do is look at other options. And one of the examples I'll share with you today is um, the So Kind Registry, which is this image over here. I've got the link down here. There are actually several different types of registries like this. So if you like this concept, you can do a Google search and there'll be a bunch of other stuff that comes up too. But just for the example sake, I'm, I'm showing you guys this one today. What this is, is essentially a registry online, kind of like what you'd think about for um, a baby shower or um, for a wedding gift, right? But 
you can adjust it to whatever you need. If you're having a birthday celebration, if you're having um, a Christmas party, anything like that, whatever the holiday is, you can adjust it and, and list out what you want for gifts. And that could be anything from, hey, I would like a $50 donation to the Red Cross or to this animal shelter. Um, again, gifts of time, gifts of experience, gifts of meaning, um, where maybe it's not even something physically gifted and maybe it's not even gifted to you. It's something in honor of you. So there's a lot of ways to look at gifts this holiday season. And of course that relates back to packing material. We'll also talk about this a little bit too, once we get into the holiday section as well. Some other examples here too, museum memberships, um, local community supported agriculture membership, lots of different ways to look at this in terms of um, gifts and um, actual, you know, physical versus meaningful, right? Okay, and then looking into some other options, you know, if we are going to send those gifts through mail, through packages, which I completely understand, um, I will admit to this year with everything that's going on with the pandemic, beyond gift giving, I think this is also just a reality of 2020 that a lot of us are buying things online. We've got things that are being sent to our door versus us actually going to the store, uh, which makes complete sense with public health recommendations. So this is, you know, another good reason to be talking about this. So we'll run through some materials here. First, we're going to talk about cardboard. Cardboard is something that, you know, to a certain extent, we can reuse it. You know, boxes are durable for a few uses. Once we're done using it, we can recycle it and we can also compost it. Now, if you're going to go the compost route, make sure any of that tape is removed. Um, any sort of plastic tape, not good for the compost pile. For recycling, it's fine to leave it on there, um, but just a few things to keep in mind there. So cardboard's always good. It's also a great material if we think about the recycling stream, it's very recyclable um, and it's something that we have strong markets for in our, in our region, which is great. So meaning there are companies that are very interested and capable to buy this material and recycle it into new products. So that is very promising. If we're thinking about letters, birthday cards, holiday cards, et cetera, um, regular plain old paper envelopes are great, okay? These are perfect for um, sending, mailing different things to family or friends, and these are 100% recyclable. If they're just that pure paper too, that's compostable, so that's always a really good material to use. If we're thinking about packing material, so if you're trying to cushion something that you're sending in the mail, uh, craft paper, as you can see here, just, so just plain brown paper is great. And it really gets the job done. It's 100% recyclable. And then the other option as well, it's also 100% compostable. So that's always a good option. We'll talk about this a little bit more later when we talk about holiday materials as well. Newspaper. So I'm actually showing you guys a lot of stuff that I wrap my own gifts in. Um, at Christmas time for my family, my gifts always look pretty hilarious because it's the mix match of, uh, you know, a piece of a map or an old newspaper or all sorts of different materials to wrap gifts, um, which actually can look pretty cool if you think about it. Wrapping gifts in newspaper or old maps um, can have a very cool look to it. So newspaper is always a good one. Also, again, very easy to recycle, very easy to compost. Um, the other one I wanted to mention to you all as well is that there are continuing to be new types of packing material coming out, um, engineered compostable material. So as you can see here in the background, this is a material, I believe the brand is green cell foam and it's corn based. If you pour water on it, it starts to disintegrate. So it is not plastic at all. It is 100% uh, US Composting Council certified compostable. Um, and again, it gets a little bit more complicated as we start getting some of these different types of packing material in the mail. What I recommend with this, it is always good to look at the labels, especially with this type of material. Oftentimes, if manufacturers or, uh, you know, packages being sent from online shopping, uh, you know, distribution locations, if they're using this type of material, it's usually something to be proud of and they want it represented. You know, they want to let their consumer and customer know that we're trying to do better and be more sustainable and help the environment. And so oftentimes there is labeling on this. Check that out to, to learn if it is something that can be recycled, if it is something that can, can be composted. If you yeah. don't know, that's where I come in. So please always feel free to give me a call. 
um, we can talk through it and see if it is something that can go in that compost bin or can, can be recycled. And I'll have my contact information at the end of this presentation as well. Similar to craft paper, um, sometimes bubble wrap is used to cushion and pack material. Uh, this is reusable. So I do recommend if you encounter bubble wrap, try to reuse it. It is sometimes recyclable. It depends on what area you're in. Um, some communities have programs for it, sometimes not. So in our particular community, bubble wrap is typically a stretchy material. And that's our rule of thumb for plastic film or wrap or bags that can be recycled. So if it stretches similar to a retail shopping bag, typically that's a type of material that local take back programs will accept. And when I say local take back programs, I mean like Hy-Vee or Fairway or Walmart where there are those plastic bag recycling programs. Um, if it is crinkly and does not, let's see, um, here's another example. If it's crinkly and does not stretch, so this is another example of a plastic film that um, maybe is a little bit more durable. Sometimes we think of like dog food bags um, or different types of gift wrap where it's sparkly and crinkly and just is stiff. It does not stretch. Those are the types of plastic films that typically are not recyclable and, and we would just recommend to go in the regular trash if they can't be reused. Okay, so Moving on, styrofoam. This is always a really big question we get, especially around the holiday time. So here I have styrofoam uh, peanuts, usually used for packing material. And then here we also have these big styrofoam blocks, very common to see around uh, a television or furniture for cushioning. Um, they're very dense, thick blocks of styrofoam. So any type of styrofoam, this, the packing peanuts, you know, to go containers from a restaurant, styrofoam in general, unfortunately, is a very difficult to recycle material. So this would just be regular trash. Uh, we understand it is difficult sometimes to find alternatives. Um, we are presenting you guys with alternatives today. So if it is up to you and you can choose something else, great. You're, you know, learning what some other options are today. We understand also though that sometimes things are sent to you and all of a sudden you have this material that you didn't know you were gonna get. And in that case, the best thing you can do is just know which bin is the right bin to put it in. So styrofoam would just be regular trash. We talked about some of those plastic film types. And then this is another big question that I get. And, and again, especially with a, a lot of online shopping and sending packages this year, and increasingly as we approach the holiday time, these types of envelopes where on the outside, they look like paper and on the inside, there's actually a full layer of bubble wrap and it's plastic bubble wrap. These are a type of material that unfortunately we cannot recycle being that there are two materials meshed together where they're, they're not able to be separated. This would be a really good example of something that we just cannot recycle. So this would be regular trash, again, unless you can reuse it. Now, one other thing that I'll mention on this, because some companies, just like what we're seeing with all these new types of sustainable packing material, where uh, they're evolving and learning new ways to get creative and use sustainable material, what we've started to see with, I believe, Amazon is one of the main carriers of this that I know of, at least uh, as of now, and, and I will say, I also welcome and love it when our residents reach out to me with these types of materials because it keeps me current on what those manufacturers are using. Um, usually what that results in is me doing a, a quick research project to figure out, you know, is this compostable, is it recyclable, et cetera. So again, another reason I welcome and love hearing from you guys on the different types of things you're getting sent in the mail, but Amazon has an envelope that looks kind of like this and on the inside, it sort of looks like bubble wrap, but it's actually paper-based bubble wrap. Um, so it's a cushion material that again, kind of looks like bubble wrap, but the whole envelope is 100% paper. So like I said, you know, it's great that we're seeing some of these sustainable packaging types of materials out there. Um, the downside of that is that it keeps you on your toes in terms of trying to remember what to do with all the different types of materials. So back to me, if you know there are any questions out there, if you're seeing new types of material and you don't know what to do with it, you can always feel free to reach out to me and, and we can figure it out together. Okay, so now moving on to holiday material. Um, and we're gonna see some overlap here compared to what we talked about with the packing, packing 
um, and packaging material as well. But for holiday material, similarly looking for non-existent, reusable, recyclable, compostable. So talking about sustainable gift giving, and we talked about this a little bit with the non-existent packing material, um, but again, looking at gifts of time and experience that can look like a lot of different things. It could be a homemade certificate for cleaning the house for a loved one. It could be watching a loved one's favorite movie with them, a massage certificate, all sorts of different things you can do where it doesn't create any waste, but it, it is a gift. Uh, and then the sustainable registry again, so kind registry. The other resource I wanted to share with you all is called New Dream. And this is a, a great website with a lot of different resources. And they do have some, some very good information on simplifying the holidays. So if you are interested in learning a little bit more about what's out there, what types of tips and recommendations, I would say uh, check out New Dream. It's a, it's a very cool website and uh, it goes well beyond what we're talking about today too for simplifying the holidays. Some very good tips there. Now, sustainable gift wrap. Uh, there are two categories I'll have for you all today. So we'll look at some reusable options and we'll look at some recyclable options. So reusable, there's a lot of different options for reusable bags using actual cloth, durable boxes for recyclable. We'll again talk about that craft paper. Uh, upcycle, so looking at something like old paper maps and being able to convert that into wrapping paper, newspaper, etc. Okay, so as we can see here, we've gone from using our craft paper for packing material, and now we're actually talking about using it for gift wrap. Uh, this is something I will say, especially in our conversations with our sorting facility. So all of our recycling material that is collected at the curb, that is collected in the drop-off recycling roll-off bins, all of that material is sent to the Waste Commission of Scott County, which is a sorting facility in Davenport, Iowa. And uh, I talk to them often about our accepted materials list to make sure that we have the most current list uh, and to make sure that we're representing exactly what they can accept and properly recycle. And so being that we are approaching the holiday season, I reached out to my contacts over in Davenport and asked about wrapping paper. Um, we actually right now are updating our curbside recycling guide. And that was one of the conversation pieces that came up with that. And um, how we've represented it in the past is that metallic and glitter coated paper is an issue. After talking with them, they've also relayed to us that it goes beyond that. You know, there's a lot of wrapping paper that has non-paper additives, that's laminated, that's plastic based, which gets really tricky. And so the overall messaging that we have this year is really wrapping paper, the majority of wrapping paper is not recyclable and to look at other options. So one of the best options that especially Waste Commission of Scott County recommends is craft paper. So exactly what you see here, um, it is just 100% paper. And this is the best, safest, most simple option in terms of knowing that it's recyclable, knowing that's, that it is uh, recyclable and compostable for that matter. The other example that we talked about earlier too, using maps. So this is, uh, probably one or two Christmases ago for me, some gifts wrapped in old maps. Um, most maps are paper-based and assuming that you're just using a paper map that's recyclable, that's compostable. I do occasionally come across maps that are a, a very durable plastic material. So that would be the exception here. But again, most of the time we're dealing with paper maps. Reusable are, are also a great option here. And here are a few examples of cloth durable bags that can be reused and oftentimes even washed. And uh, what we do in my family is we use some stuff like this and then also gift bags that, um, you know, we keep in good shape and we reuse them every year, right? Um, and that reduces waste that also saves money because we have kind of a constant stock of uh, different gift wrapping that we can just reuse every year. So that also just keeps it simple for us. And then also durable reusable boxes. So this is a gift box that already is colored with what looks like wrapping paper, um, but it's actually just a durable box. So that is another great option. And again, simple, you can reuse it year after year. Now, this is where we delve into the wrapping paper side. So I'll, I'll give some specifics about sort of the, the troublesome types of wrapping paper. 
we'll talk a little bit more about what is recyclable out of that whole category. So this here is an example of metallic coated wrapping paper. This unfortunately, because it does have that mix of metal material in the paper makes it so it is not recyclable. So if you're looking to use a, a wrapping paper this year, not craft paper, but a wrapping paper this year, try to avoid the metallic because there's really nothing you can do with it unless you're able to reuse it. Similarly, glitter wrapped presents. So glitter coated or metallic coated are issues. Um, again, it's non-paper additive, so it's very difficult to separate out there if it's uh, directly attached to that paper layer. Now, if we look at this image here, uh, we can see some of these wrapping papers are metallic. Some might have a plastic lamination on them, and then some are just printed dyed paper. Um, in the case of, and I, I will continue to, to say this in conversations I have with our residents because we get a lot of questions about this at the holiday time. If it is plain paper uh, that you can tear, you can see that there is no plastic layering that separates out, that is usually fine to recycle. So I, I will tell you all that here. Um, in our general outreach, we try to keep it as simple as possible, but if I do get into the nitty gritty with residents on specifically what type of product they have, I can certainly offer those recommendations. Um, but for the greater good of making sure we reduce contamination, that is one of the reasons that especially our sorting facility says no wrapping paper, just because there's such a large majority of it that is not recyclable. So that's the trouble with that. When we talk about holiday light strings, there are a lot of options for this. So in terms of year after year, we recommend use those light strings as many times as you can. When they do burn out, we have lots of recycling opportunities. So we are as of November 23rd, I believe is the start date for our holiday lights recycling program. And that will be in Coralville and Iowa City. Coralville has several locations. Iowa City will have a few as well. And uh, that news release will be coming out soon on all of those locations. But I will also add, in addition to the temporary locations that are set up for about a month and a half during the holiday time to recycle those lights, if you happen to be coming across a light string that uh, you know, you're sorting out your garage or your basement and you find something that just does not work and you're looking to get rid of it at a different time of the year, we do have all year round holiday lights recycling at the Eastside Recycling Center through electronics recycling, which is in the restore donation area around the back of the building, or our electronics recycling out at the Iowa City landfill as well. So, you know, I it happens to all of us. We're sorting through something. It's July and you've got holiday lights you're looking to recycle. You can do that at Eastside or the Iowa City landfill. So there's still options there. And then talking about trees. So there's uh, two different types of trees, right, that we can choose from this, this time of year. One is reusable. So as we can see here, trees that we use year after year, we take down, we usually put in the basement or the garage, then we pull back out for the next year. Uh, you know, these, we, and we get questions from the public on this, you know, what, what do you recommend from a sustainability standpoint, a fake tree or a real tree? Well, fake trees, you know, the biggest benefit that I can tell you for this is if you keep it for a number of years, that is sustainable. You know, that, that really adds up over time, the positive impact of using a reusable tree. Um, of course, there's an impact in making that in the first place to construct and build uh, and make that artificial tree. But, you know, if I look at our family, we've used the same tree for several years um, and uh, not gone out and, and cut down a tree in the environment every year. So I, I look at that impact and um, consider that worth it within what we've, how we've approached it within our own family. However, um, there are a lot of households that like to do the real trees. And if that is your household, that is completely fine. We have options for that as well. So if you do get a real tree during the holiday time, we've got composting for that. So if you are a curbside customer, We've got, uh, usually we advertise a time of year in which we pick them up, but really to be quite honest, if you put a tree at the curb in July, we will pick it up. Um, it's just some slight adjustment with staffing and what we do out at the compost facility to get really the bulk of the trees 
around that January time when people are taking down their decorations. Um, but we can accept that at the curb. We can also take that directly out at our compost facility. I will say, uh, if any of you have been out to the compost facility when we're grinding up the material um, and there's a lot of Christmas trees in the pile, it smells like Christmas out at the compost facility, which is quite wonderful. Um, so we can accept, like I said, any type of tree, just make sure that there are no ornaments, no lights left on it, so. All right, and I believe that is the end of what I have to say, but I do wanna say here on this slide, I have my contact information. So any additional questions that any of you have beyond this call, we are, you know, I'm happy to chat more. And then also some of the resources that we talked about today. We really do have everything that you need to know on the website. It's a large information hub. It is not always the easiest to navigate, which is why I recommend um, you know, paying attention to the URLs that we share, such as these. So if you want just recycling information, it is a whole lot easier just to type in this address than to try to search through the city website just because it is such a large information hub. So if you're looking for recycling information, we do have our direct link here. Same with organic, so food waste, yard waste, and this goes for the curbside side of things. This goes for if you're taking material directly to the facility, we've got all options on that page. Same with garbage. We've got our hazardous material page, which shows information on the different types of hazardous material we accept and um, more information specifically on batteries as well, if you're wanting to learn more about that.